Shaheem, Staten Island, bottom up. This is the Hip Hop Gossip site. Okay, NYC Gossip Girl, Hip Hop Gossip site.com. We in the building with Shaheem. Yeah, well, actually, we outside in front of the building. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But they know, they know I told the readers that we was gonna interview you and everything like that. So we just gonna go back into your history because you got a long history. Okay. You came out when you were little. Yeah. Cause I remember seeing Shaheem as a baby. Little nigga, like <laughs> when these niggas cooking that, like these niggas was doing chores when I was on tour, like for real, like crazy. Yeah, you were you were young, you were yeah, young. Yeah, I came outside very early. Yeah, you were like like Bow Wow, like you know when he came out he was little. Yeah, but I was from the projects though. <laughs> like, like I was, I had BB guns and guns and shit like that. Okay. Yeah, it was different. It wasn't no Bow Wow situation. No. Not nothing from Bow Wow, but yeah, it was yeah. like from two different lanes. You know what I'm saying? Right. So when you came out at such a young age, how how was that experience for you? Because I'm sure you experienced a lot of things that most kids that age don't. So um, how, what was that like? From the gate, before even music, life was life was more than what the average kid went through, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a kid from Stapleton Projects, Staten Island, one of the roughest projects, you know, in Staten Island, you know. My mom was addicted to drugs, you know what I'm saying? My father in prison, my family in prison, like, so I come from that kind of background, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, I, you know, by God's blessings, I was able to, uh, you know, make music and get a record deal and get, get, money, you get fame, get all these things, but it starts at home. Right. So it's like, if you don't have the proper guidance, you know what I'm saying, you can really fuck shit up. A lot of people have it twisted, and if my memory serves me correctly, you were out as a solo artist, and a lot of people think, some of the younger heads think that you came out with Wu-Tang, no. and that's not the case. No, can we not, clarify that? Yeah, I mean, it, it went like this, right? Okay, like... Like I said, I rhyme, Rizzo did beats, RNS did beats, and you know, and we, we, everybody was trying to do their thing at the same time, you know what I mean? And I wound up getting into a production situation, production deal through Virgin Records. We talk in 91, like, you know what I'm saying? I had my first deal in 91, but I was a minor. So what happened was, you know, I had to go through Supreme Court because there was like, you know, child stars that got taken for their money and things like that by their parents or whatever. So. The, the, the law is that a minor has to go through, you know, the court system. So that, that slowed up my progress of actually being released. But yeah, I had my deal before Wu-Tang dropped and, you know what I'm saying, Wu-Tang came out with an album. Mm -hmm. But Wu-Tang still exists. Right. Niggas just wasn't famous yet, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, I, 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 had, I had a major deal. I was on a major, major record label, you know what I'm saying? RZA produced on my first album well you know? yeah but as far as them doing some shit like not to take nothing from sons of man and killer army but i wasn't put out through them once they became them you know what i'm saying right like, we, we was like this and wu-tang was wu-tang shine was shine but shine is wu-tang mm -hmm. you know forever don't get fucked up now i'm gonna take it a little bit far back because when foxy brown first came out <laughs> People don't know. We gotta bring them to history. When Foxy came on that LL joint, who shot you? I was like, Yo, Shaheem killed it. And they was like, Nah, that's a I new mean, chick. That that's because she was very influenced by Shaheem. Her name before Foxy Brown was AKA. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was Shaheem. She was influenced. You know what I mean? And, you know, that was dope. <laughs> yeah, but there was, there was, there was, I mean. Hold on. Everybody, well, where's 40 Meadow? <laughs> <laughs> it's gangster. <laughs> <laughs> Shout over there and all that. And all the strap. Interrupting our bite. interview. My dog gonna bite some. <laughs> <laughs> but there was no no beef behind that because I know a lot. Of, I wasn't the only one that felt like, like there was this. a similarity with the voices. What it was was it was it was beyond the voice thing with me. You know what I'm saying? Me and uh, me and Foxy. Like, I knew her personally, you know what I'm saying? And um, she was around. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, when it came out, and after it came out, like, I, I didn't get, I didn't get the, uh, well, I'm on the joint. 
I, I heard it for the first time like everybody else. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, like what the deal? Like that that's Staten Island with the deal. If you know slang and you know what the deal, we was the son and all that. We were niggas that started that shit. So I was just like, oh wow, influencer. Like I, I you know, that was good. That was good for hip hop. <laughs> okay. <laughs>